we need to write each fraction as a decimal. And the way to do this is to remember that some fractions have decimal place values. So we know that the first digit after the decimal point is the tenths digit, and then the second digit after the decimal point is the hundredths digit. So we can find equivalent fractions for the fractions that we have here with a denominator of either 10 or 100 because then we'll be able to write them as a decimal. So first we have 3 fifths. Now 10 is a multiple of 5 so we can find a fraction equivalent to 3 fifths which has a denominator of 10. We use multiplication to find equivalent fractions and 5 times 2 is 10. What we do to the denominator, we do to the numerator as well, and 3 times 2 is 6. So now that we know that 3 fifths is equivalent to 6 tenths, which means it's the same size as 6 tenths, we can write it as a decimal, because the first digit after the decimal point is the tenths digit, so we can write that as 0.6. Next, we have 3 quarters. Here, we can't change 3 quarters into tenths because 10 is not a multiple of 4. It's not in the 4 times table. But 100 is a multiple of 4. So, we can change 3 quarters into hundredths. Now, 4 times 25 is 100. If you think counting in 25s, we have 25, 50, 75 and the fourth multiple is 100. So what we do to the denominator, we do to the numerator as well. So with 3 times 25, well we can count 25, 50, the third multiple of 25 is 75. So 3 quarters is equivalent to 75 hundredths. Remember, that denominator of 100 tells us that we can't go past the hundredths place value column. So we need to write 75 hundredths as 0.75, so the 7 gets shifted over into the tenths because we can't go past the hundredths column. And remember the second digit after the decimal point is the hundredths, so we can only have two digits after the decimal point if we have a denominator of 100. Now we have 4 over 25. Well, 100 is a multiple of 25, and 25 times 4 is 100. What we do to the denominator, we do to the numerator as well, and 4 times 4 is 16. So, the denominator of 100 tells us that we need two digits after the decimal point, so we write 16 hundredths as 0 0.16, so the 1 gets moved over to the tenths. Finally, we have 12 fiftieths. Well, 100 is in the 50 times table because 50 times 2 is 100. So we do the same to the numerator and 12 times 2 is 24. So now that we know that 12 fiftieths is equivalent or the same size as 24 hundredths, we know that we can write it as the decimal 0.24. So let's have a look at this first question. We had 3 fifths. We found that that was equivalent to 6 tenths, and notice the same amount of the rectangle or fraction bar is shaded blue, but splitting it into tenths is important because tenths have a decimal place value, so we could write that as 0 0.6. Then we had 3 quarters. If we take off the quarters grid, and put a hundredths grid on top of it. We need to do some rearranging because we have some half rectangles, but when we do that, we can see that we have 75 hundredths, so that's 0 0.75, because you can imagine 70 of these hundredths, so these seven lines that go all the way down are the same size as tenths, so that's why the seven digit gets shifted over to the tenths column. Then we had 4 25ths, we changed those 25ths into hundredths and that meant that we had 16 hundredths, so 0 0.16. Finally, we had 12 50ths, 
we changed that into 24 hundredths so that we could write it as the decimal 0 0.24.